In the previous experiment and video, we explored some of the basic operational aspects of an oscilloscope by probing known voltages and waveforms. Now in this experiment, we will explore some additional functionalities of the oscilloscope while measuring a basic AC circuit. To begin, we will initiate our oscilloscope, turning on the first channel trace by selecting the pertinent menu button. If the trace for the other channel is on, we will turn it off by using the channel 2 menu button. Since we will be connecting a BNC to banana cable, no attenuation factor is necessary, so we must make sure that the channel is set to 1x voltage magnification. Before making any measurements, we also want to make sure the trace is zeroed properly by changing the coupling to ground and adjusting the position of the trace to be aligned with the horizontal axis. A similar procedure should be used to make sure the horizontal position is properly set but this time using the positioning arrows as guides to be aligned with the vertical axis. Make sure to change the coupling type back to AC before connecting the function generator. The function generator will be set to a 250 Hz sine wave for this first part of the experiment. Remember that by using automated measuring utilities, we can determine valuable information such as the peak-to-peak -peak voltage or the period of the waveform. Notice also that these values may or may not change depending on the type of waveform we use. The amplitude and type of waveform can be adjusted on the function generator. In this next procedure, we'll explore using multiple channels on our oscilloscope. First, we want to turn on the trace for the second channel by pressing the menu button and then connect an attenuator probe to this channel making sure that the attenuation factor of the probe is matched by the oscilloscope. Just as before, we will center the trace by setting the coupling to ground and moving the trace position to a zero point. With the second channel of the oscilloscope moved back to AC coupling, we will construct a simple RC circuit with the function generator turned off. To construct this circuit, we will use a decade resistor and decade capacitor which are special laboratory components that can readily be changed to have different resistive or capacitive values. In this case, we will set the decade resistor to 1.5 kilo ohms by rotating the 1000 decade knob denoted by 1k to 1 and the 100 decade knob to 5, since 1000 plus 5000 is the same as 1.5 times 10 to the third, the correct resistive value is now available for use. The decade capacitor works in the same way, and we will set this component to 0.5 microfarads. These components are then joined to each other and the function generator using banana cables, with the attenuator probe placed somewhere on the wire that connects the capacitor and resistor. With the circuit complete, we will re-energize our function generator, and then make any necessary scaling changes to the oscilloscope so that both waveforms are visible on the screen. Notice how the two waveforms are now out of phase with each other. Before we explore how the values of the resistor and the capacitor affect the phase alignment of the sinusoids, we should first collect some measurements. The cursor functionality is particularly useful in determining things such as voltage, amplitudes, or even the time positions of the peak amplitudes. To use the cursor, we will select the proper button, which will allow us to change the cursor between measuring voltage or time. We also have a choice between measuring along the plot of channel 1 or 2. Notice how at the bottom of the screen, the intersection of the cursor line with the plot is represented by a system of coordinates. Taking the difference in these coordinates will allow you to ascertain the relevant measurements. Once we have collected our measurements, let us take a moment to adjust the values of the decade resistor and capacitor to see how this affects our waveforms. Notice that increasing the resistance causes sinusoidal plots to look very similar, to the point that at a high enough resistance they appear to nearly perfectly overlap. The opposite effect appears to be true when the capacitance is reduced, with the difference in amplitude increasing drastically at lower capacitor values. Yet when the decade capacitor is increased, a similar effect to the resistor is observed, with the two waveforms becoming more similar at higher capacitive values. In the last part of this procedure, 
We will now make a small alteration to our circuit, in which we will swap the position of the resistor and the capacitor, while also manipulating their values slightly. Additionally, we will now set the function generator to produce a half-wave square function with a frequency of 30 Hz. With the attenuator probe connected to the same wire that bridges the capacitor and resistor, we can see an interesting waveform appear on the oscilloscope. We move the waveforms so that they are superimposed on top of each other. Keep in mind that the first channel represents the direct output from the function generator, while the second channel represents what is occurring in the circuit. Notice that as the square wave of the function generator goes high, the voltage of the circuit begins to climb. This is because the capacitor is becoming charged. Then when the square wave goes to zero, which is what distinguishes a half wave from a full wave square function, the capacitor begins to discharge. We can then use the cursor utility to make some pertinent measures of these functions, including the 63% charging voltage, which will allow us to determine an experimental time constant for this circuit.